I haven't come to preach any fancy message just tonight. Nothing that's probably going to uh, blow your mind. <laughs> Amen. But uh, just come to share with you what the Lord has given me. And uh, if you brought your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Psalms, chapter number 137. Psalms chapter 137. Amen. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord this evening? Amen. King David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm glad to be in his house tonight. I'm glad to be in his presence. Glad to be able to worship with you, my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Amen. What a, what a privilege. What a privilege it is. Psalms chapter 137. If you found that, if you would, please stand for the reading of the Word of God this evening. Amen. Psalms chapter number 137. Reading four verses, beginning with the first verse of chapter, uh, Psalms chapter 137, verse number one. The Word of God says, By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. Verse number two. We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof, for they that carried us away captive required of us a song, and they that wasted us required of us mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. Verse number four. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Amen. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? If you would, stretch your hands this way and pray for me this evening. Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, Lord, I humbly come before you, the throne of grace this evening. Father, I stand before you, Lord, knowing in myself that I can accomplish nothing. Lord, in myself I can do nothing. But, Father, I am standing here this evening completely relying upon the Holy Ghost of God. Father, I'm completely relying upon your power this evening to come, O oh Lord, and, and, to, and to infuse me with power this evening from on high. Father, envelop me with the Holy Ghost this evening. Father, I'm asking this all in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I know that in myself, Lord, I can do nothing but fail. But I'm serving you and I'm coming to you. Lord, and I'm praying in the name of the one who has never failed and failure is not in your vocabulary. Spirit of God, I'm asking that you would just completely take over my mind, take over my heart, take over my soul, take over my body, take my tongue this evening. Lord, and use me to speak the word of God that you've given in this place this evening. Father, use it, Lord. Use this word of God, Lord, to, to, to minister to the hearts and minds of those gathered here this evening. Father, I never fail to give you all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory. For it's in the name of Jesus Christ that we do pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. I have preached this message here before, uh, probably about a year and a half ago. Um, and you know, I kind of struggle with preaching the same message twice at, at the same location. But I heard my papa all say, my papa was a pastor for f over 40 years in, in Lebanon, Middletown area. And uh, he pastored that same church for over 40 years. And I heard him say one time, somebody asked him, I heard, somebody said, I heard you preach that message once before and you preached it again. Why would you do that for? And it was kind of kind of uh, giving him down the road because he preached the same message twice. And my papa, he, a little slow, and just kind of sat there for a moment, and he looked at him, and real kind, and he said, Well, I've heard you sing the same, the same song about three or four times. <laughs> he said, And uh, the word, the word that, that the Lord has given me has come from the Lord, just like the song that you sing uh, that was inspired by the, by, the, by the Lord. He said, And the word I'm preaching has came directly from the Lord, so um, if, 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 you're, if you're just going to be like that, then you shouldn't sing that song anymore. <laughs> Amen. But, uh, Ed, so, but, um, but I, I, don't want to, I don't want to become a boring, and I don't want to become a, something that, that you've already heard before, and so you think it's not to pay attention to it, or, or so on and so forth. But uh, I do want to share this this evening, because I felt like this is what the Lord laid on my heart. And uh, just as we sing songs over and over again, and each time we sing that song, somebody else may receive a blessing from it that didn't receive a blessing last time. Amen. Maybe somebody wasn't here last time he preached this message. I don't know. But uh, either way, it's what the Lord has given us this evening. So if you don't like it, I'm sorry. But it looks like you're stuck with it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But the passage of Scripture that we read this evening, Psalms 137, verses number 1 through 4, historians have, have said that that was written somewhere about the year of 583 B.C., and the author's name is not given to us, but we are made to believe by the words that was, that was written down, amen, that he, the, the, the writer of, of Psalms 137, amen, we're, we're made to believe that he, the writer, was numbered among those who were uh, numbered uh, uh, among those who were taken captive and put into bondage by Babylon. One of God's people, amen. 
The psalmist here is painting a portrait for us. If we can just look at that this evening. Uh, he's painting a portrait for us this evening. And, 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 the, and the portrait that he's painting is not one of great beauty. The portrait that he's painting this evening is, is, is not one of, of, of much encouragement. The, uh, the, the portrait that he's, that he's illustrating this evening is not one that, that you're going to really want to, to, to preach if you're feeling downtrodden or it's not something that, 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 you're, that you're really going to want to read if you've had a really bad day. Amen. But he's painting something here this evening that is, that is sad. He's, he's, he, the psalmist is painting a sad scene in these verses. The exiles sat along the banks of the Euphrates River in Babylon and they wept as they remembered Zion. The city of God. That's the portrait that he is painting for us this evening. Amen. He goes on to say that they hung their harps on the branches of the willow trees which grew along the riverbanks. This scene, this portrait, was the result of their stubborn refusal to turn away from their own sin. Amen. This, this, this portrait, this scene, this happenstance was the result of them turning a deaf ear to the words and the warnings of the prophets of God. Their determined and stiff-necked disobedience had finally caught up to them and led them to Babylon. And now, <laughs> they find themselves much like the prodigal son in the faraway country they find themselves homesick. Amen. How many has ever been homesick? I remember when we would go out and evangelize, we would leave our home about two or three days after Christmas, go to Florida, January, February, and March down in Florida, and uh, go, to, go into Alabama, and then go into uh, to Georgia, and then go into, um, and then go into Louisiana, Mississippi, and then into Texas, and then finally come back home sometime in the month of late June or early July. We'd spend the first six months of, of the year away from home, away from, uh, away from Mount Mon Papaw and away from all of our cousins and all of our friends and family we had back home. And sometimes, hey amen, don't get me wrong, I, 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 I did, I, I, I enjoyed that ministry, I enjoyed the work, but sometimes you just get a little bit homesick. How many has ever been there? Oh, yeah. Amen. These people, amen, they were in the faraway country like that prodigal son, and now they find themselves with a sickness for home. Amen. But their memories were mingled with tears. They longed for the sights of their own country. And now they were painfully aware of how bad sin had impoverished them. They refused to forsake the affair that they had with idolatry. And they continued in their rebellion against the one true God. And at last, they experienced the judgment of God. Amen? Amen. Judgment always comes, friend. Judgment always comes. They lost the privilege of living in their own land. And they were marched into exile. Amen. And only, did, only then did they come to their spiritual senses. And only then did they come to the realization that their sin had robbed them of precious privileges previously taken for granted. Only from foreign soil, <coughs> only from the foreign soil were they finally able to see what they had refused to see on native soil. Only then did they see the value, amen, in what they had previously spurned and lost. And now the people who God loved find themselves in bondage, sitting along the riverbanks with no song to sing. Amen. Oh, how sad it is when God's people lose their song. How sad it is, amen, when people who were raised in the house of God, people who were raised in the church, 
People who wept at the altars of the Lord. People who felt the Spirit of the Lord move upon them. Amen. People who sang the songs of Zion. Amen. Oh, how sad it is when those same people, amen, those same ones refuse to heed the counsel of the godly. And those same ones refuse to hear the Word of God. Amen. And those same ones find themselves in bondage. I take no delight in that portrait. I take no comfort, amen, or no consolation when that happens to somebody. I've seen so many young people and so many people in general, amen, who at one time loved, the, loved, loved God with all of their heart, at one time loved Him, one time served Him, amen, but somewhere along the line, they, they, they begin to flirt with the things of this world and they begin to wink at sin and they begin to hold hands with ungodliness and they begin to have an affair with Satan. Amen. And, and they think they're having a good time and they think nothing bad will happen. Amen. They think they're just flirting around and having fun. Mom and dad don't know what they're talking about and, and my, my pastor don't know what I need and my youth pastor just don't understand me. The Sunday school teacher is old and out of style. Amen. I'm going to live like I want to live and I'll be okay. Just sit back and watch me live how I want to live. You can't tell me nothing. Amen. You, you, oh, don't judge me. Amen. Don't, don't even go there. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be all right. I can hold hands with Satan. Amen. I come to church on a Sunday and be just fine. Amen. I'll live like I'm going to live and I'll be just fine. Don't worry about me. Stop praying for me. Amen. Stop, stop reaching after me. Stop, stop, stop taking me aside and trying to talk to me. Stop trying to warn me. I'm doing what I want to do. Amen. I've seen this happen. I've, 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 I've witnessed this with my own eyes. Amen. Oh, how sad it is. Amen. But they trade the song of Zion for a fling with the flesh. And when they come to their spiritual senses, they find themselves in bondage like they never would have dreamed that they would have found themselves in. Far away from home, far away from God, far away from the church. And now they have no song to sing. Amen. Now they have no joy in their life. Now they have no pleasure. Amen. Now they have no hope. Now they find themselves surrounded by the enemy of their soul. And they have hung their harps in the willow trees because they have no longer a song to sing. Amen. You see, the children of Israel stopped singing the songs of Zion long before they were brought into captivity by Babylon. I said the children of Israel stopped singing the songs of Zion long before they were brought into captivity. Amen. They were still singing. Amen. But they stopped singing to the Lord of Lords. They stopped singing to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And they started singing to a God by the name of Baal. They were still singing, but they were no longer singing to the right God. Amen. They started singing to the Egyptian sun God. They started singing to, singing to idols made of wood and, and, and stone and silver and gold. Amen. They, and, they, and they even brought those idols into God's temple. Amen. They, they started sacrificing their own children to idols. Amen. What do you think they done out in Egypt? Amen. When they, when they were brought out of Egypt. Amen. They started sacrificing their children to idols. They took the holy, consecrated things of God that He had set aside for his worship and they perverted their worship amen they even went as far as to take the places of historic value like Bethel and they turned it into amen shrines for their idols Bethel was the place that Jacob had a vision and he saw the angels ascending and descending from heaven. It was the place where he wrestled with God. Amen. Where, where he wrestled with the angel of the Lord until he got his breakthrough. Until he got his blessing. Amen. It was the place where he said, I will not let you go until you bless me. And he dedicated that place and he called it Bethel. They took those places where God had visited them. And they made them into places for their idol worship. Smacking God in the face. Spitting in the eye of God. They were still singing. But they were not singing to God. Amen. And because of their evil doing. <coughs> because of their long headedness. Because of their refusal to obey the one true God and to worship the one true God, God pronounced judgment upon them. Amen. I've come to ask you a question this evening. What song are you singing?
in your own personal individual life? What song are you singing, singing this evening? Amen. I know we're living in a world where they say that nothing matters. Everything is okay. Amen. You can do this and it's just fine. Don't judge me. Amen. I'm, I'm living my own life. The Bible doesn't apply to me. The Word of God is old and outdated. The Bible doesn't really mean it. God didn't mean it when He said it that way. Amen. That's not what God was talking about. There's too much gray areas. Amen. We're living in that kind of world where nothing matters and everything is okay. Amen. But I've come to tell you this evening that it is important, amen, that we sing the right song to the right person. Amen? Or to the right deity, rather. Amen. It does matter. It does matter what you do with your life and in your life. It does matter where you go. It does matter the things that you say. It does matter, amen, who you hold relationships with. It does matter who and what you open up your heart unto. Amen. It does matter what song that you sing. Amen. Just because someone else is doing it does not mean that it's okay for you to do it. Just because some churches are doing it does not mean that it's of God. Just because some youth groups are doing it does not mean that God is pleased with it. Amen. But if it was sin 2,000 years ago, the Bible says it's still sin today. If it was sin 100 years ago, amen, God never changes. It's still sin today. Amen. Just because Joe Blow said it's okay now, amen, does not mean so. Until God says it's okay, until God puts a stamp of approval on it, amen, he's already denied it. And until God takes his stamp of denial off of it, amen, it is not okay for you and I to do, to mess with, to sing, to go around with, to sniff, to hold hands with, to touch. Amen. It's not okay. It's not okay. If it was sin 20 years ago, it's still sin today. Amen. We cannot sing the devil's song and expect to reap the blessings of an almighty God. Impossible. But it always produces blessings. No. Encouragement. No. Health. No. Upliftment. No. But it always produces what? Death. Amen. It always produces death. Amen. You cannot hold hands with Jesus and wink at the devil. You cannot dance with Jesus on Sunday and dance with the devil on Friday. Amen. You can't worship God with an unholy heart. You cannot lift up unholy hands to God and expect Him to receive your worship because it will not work. Amen. Psalmist said, By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept. When we remember Zion, we hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. The exiles wept that day as they reflected on the privileges that they had lost. The Bible says that they wept and they hung their harps upon the weeping branches of the willow trees. What a sad picture of the dividends of sin. Sin always pays in the currency of sorrow and misery. Sin always pays in the currency of sorrow and misery. Amen? Somebody said, well, I'm still, I just, I just, I just want to do my own thing for a while. Friend, let me tell you, I'm not speaking to anyone in general when I say this, but this is just the words that God has given me. You can thumb your nose at God today, and you may turn a deaf ear to the word of counsel and warning today, but soon you'll find yourself in a bondage wishing you would have listened. Amen. Soon you'll find yourself wishing you would have heeded the word of God. Amen. Amen. They cried when they realized that they couldn't see mommy and daddy anymore. He said they sat by the riverbanks and they wept. Amen. They cried when they realized, amen, that they, that they could no longer sing the songs of victory anymore. Amen. They wept when they remembered the times of singing in the Lord's temple songs of praise and deliverance to the one true God. They wept when they remembered being in the presence of the Lord. Amen. You may think you want to sing the devil's song today, but when tomorrow comes and you realize that you've traded the goods for a fraud, you'll be weeping and sorrowful. What song are you singing? Is there an idol in your life that is taking precedence in your life? Is there an idol in your life that you are singing to? 
What are you neglecting the one true God for? Because he says it doesn't have to be something of silver or something that you've crafted out of wood and bow before. Amen. But God says whatever you put before me and higher than me and whatever you run to first instead of running to me and whatever you, and whatever you give your time to more than you give to me is without a doubt an idol. Amen. Amen. What are you neglecting the one true living God for? What song are you singing? Mothers and fathers in this place here this evening, don't you think that those parents must have wept when they realized that they would never see their children again? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were part of this number that was carried away captive into Babylon from God's country. Amen. And I know that God moved in Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's life. He did. He moved in their life. Amen. But think about this. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego would have never had to go through the fiery furnace if mommy and daddy would have lived for God. I know God delivered them, and I'm not diminishing that fact at all. I know God proved himself real there. Amen. But just think about it. They would have never had to face the fiery furnace if mommy and daddy amen, would have put away their idol worship and served God. When you put something else before God, you're saying to your children that this is more important than God. And they will find an idol in their life as well. And they will say, this is more important than God. And what you're ultimately doing is raising your child or your children to enter into the fire. Right. Amen. 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 Daniel was part of that number. Daniel, I know God moved for him. I know God, amen, brought him out of the lion's den. But he would have never had to go in the lion's den. If somebody before him would have cut down the idols, amen, and started worshiping the one true God again. We've got to think about what we're doing, amen. Think about what we're doing for our children and our grandchildren. The things you do today impact your children's tomorrow. We live in a very selfish world. It's about me. It's about I. What can I get? What do I want to do? What is the task that I want to perform today? What do I want greater in my life? Never giving a thought about tomorrow. And what about them? What can I do for them? How can I, even if it means neglecting my wants, put my child first? And I'm not talking about your finances. I'm not talking about your workplace. I'm not talking about the home you provide. I'm not talking about the vehicle you drive. Because all those things are temporal and they will vanish away. But I'm talking about the spiritual things in your life. What can I do? Amen. What do I have to give up? If there's something in my life that's holding me back, if there's, if there's something in my life that's separating me from God, is there something in my life, amen, that my child will see and grow up and grow up around, amen, and, and, and when they're my age, they'll be put in the fire because of something that I taught them. Amen. How sad it is when people refuse to hear the Word of God. How sad it is when people refuse to be obedient unto the Word of God. It's one thing to hear the Word. The Bible says you must be a hearer and a doer of the word. <clears throat> I've seen the young man who once lived for God, once knew the Lord, at one time had a great relationship with, with the Lord, once played music in the church house on the platform, once wept at the altars of the Lord, once sang the songs of Zion, once marched around the church with his hands lifted high, giving praise to the Lord. But he started singing the devil's song somewhere. Started slipping out of the church house. Started taking his instruments and using them, no longer for the worship of the Lord, but for the edification 
of his flesh, and ultimately for the worship of the enemy. Thinking he would be all right. Thinking that he would not get hurt. Thinking that if something happened, amen, it's thinking that, 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 that he'll just come back whenever he's done with this little, this little tour. He'll just come back when he's done with this, little, with this little fling with Satan. He'll just come back and everything will be all right. Amen. But that same man today is now a drug addict and he has been in prison for, for several years and is finally out. But he's back in jail and out of jail and he is suffering from a horrible drug addiction as we speak. Wasn't always that way. Was not always that way. One time was born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, anointed of God, used by God. But now he finds himself reaping the rewards of sin. I've sat at the table in the Highland County Jail and, I was, and I've watched as the young lady after young lady after young lady wept uncontrollably amen, in front of us because she is now paying the price of singing the wrong song. I've heard the words of a woman in prison in Chowchilla, California as she spoke and she says, she is now serving a life, prentence, a life, a life sentence in, in prison in Chowchilla, California because she had a secret idol in her life. She said she would wait until her children and her husband were in, were, 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 were in bed asleep and, and she would wait till they were asleep and she was wait till, till they was, it was gone and she would, and she would uh, get the bottle and she would drink until she passed out. All the while her family and her children didn't even know that she was struggling with this thing. Amen. But it grew progress progressively worse. And one night, as she was out, amen, at the bar, she was drinking, and she was driving home drunk, amen, she crossed the center line, and she hit an oncoming car and killed every person in that vehicle, including very small young children. And now she is standing in the child chair of the women's penitentiary, serving a life sentences, actually three or four life sentences, amen, because she has taken the lives of innocent people, amen, because she had an idol in her life that she just could not seem to get rid of. She had something in her life that, was bound, that, was, that she was bound to. She had something in her life, amen. She, at, at one time, she was, she was a PTO mother. Her husband was a very respected businessman. She was very respected in the community, amen, but she threw it all away, amen, and for what? Some stupid idol. Amen. If you and I don't think that we will cry because of sin, then we better think again. If you don't think that you will get sick of sin, then you better realize that you undoubtedly will grow sick of sin. The Bible says that sin is pleasurable for a season. Seasons change. Seasons come and seasons go. Sin is pleasurable for a season. But when that season is up, the devil strips away the pleasure and he leaves you only with the guilt and the bondage and the destruction from your sin. Amen. If you don't think that you'll come to the place that you long to sing the songs of Zion once again, you better open up your eyes and realize what you're looking at right now. Sin always brings hurt, despair, torment, and pain. Satan is a threefold ministry. Somebody said, I didn't know Satan had a ministry. Yes, he does, and here it is. A threefold ministry to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That is Satan's threefold ministry. Amen. And he is doing all those three things, amen, to countless people as we speak right now. And it is, it is his desire to do those three things to your life to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's what he does. That's who he is. That's all he is capable of doing. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down, and yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. Verse number three, 
For they that carried us away captive required of us a song. And they that wasted us required of us mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. That word mirth, if you look that up in the dictionary, it means amusement, especially as expressed in laughter. In other words, they were laughing at them now. The devil was standing back laughing at the children of God now. Amen. Saying, we've got you in bondage now. And now you're sitting by this riverbank. Amen. And you have no song to sing. You've hung your harps in the willow tree. Come on now. Sing us a song of Zion. All the while laughing at their devastation. The devil will tempt you with something. And he'll bring you out. And oh, how pleasurable it is. And how wonderful it is for a season. Amen. But when, when that season is over, you find yourself in bondage, sitting by the riverbank with no more song, no more life, no more joy. And you look and the devil says, come on now. All the while laughing at you. I've got you now. You're in my bondage now. Sing a song to God now. Lift up praises to God now. In addition to the pain brought on by homesickness, their grief was intensified as their captors mockingly demanded music from them. The psalmist and his fellow exiles refused to sing the Lord's song in a foreign land. Amen. The weight and sorrow of their situation suppressed the song within their hearts. As they come to the music this evening, somebody gets us a song ready to sing. Every time I read this story and I read these scriptures, I can't help but be reminded of the story of Samson. We all know the story of Samson here, I'm sure. What a mighty man of God. The anointing of God that he placed upon his life. But Samson had a problem. Samson had something in his life that he just could not conquer, would not conquer. Delilah, the Philistine women. Amen. I'm reminded of how he laid his lap in Delilah's, how he laid his head in Delilah's lap. And as inch by inch she pressed him. And inch by inch, she grew closer to his glory and to his power with the Lord. Until finally, one day, he told her, Delilah, um, I've, 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 I've been born under the hand of God. I've been born for a purpose. I've, I've, taken, I've taken this vow. I've taken this vow, amen, that no razor would ever come upon my head. And if it does, I will lose the power that God has given me. And as Delilah rocks him to sleep, he wakes up hours later with the sound of Delilah's voice saying, Samson, Samson, arise and shake yourself, for the Philistines are come upon you to bind you and to take you. And he wakes up and he shakes himself as he has in times past. But this time, the power of God has been departed. And he probably rubs his head, expecting to feel the locks of, and, 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 and the braids of hair that's been growing for years. But this time, all he feels is a smooth scalp. And the first thing that the Philistine soldiers done to him they bound him, and they gouged out his eyes. And they led him around the town, tied to a rope like a small dog. And this mighty man of God, who just days prior to this, and weeks prior to this, and years prior to this, had one time been so respected, and one time been so feared. Amen. Amen. And, 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 and one time when he walked down those same streets, the children would hide, and, and, and everybody would come and, and go back to their places. Amen. And they didn't want him to see him because they knew, amen, that he could take out a whole army of Philistine people. But now, 
this same man is being led down the streets, blinded, stumbling, falling upon his face. The children are smacking him. The children are laughing at him. The children are sticking out their foot and tripping him as he walks by. And here Samson is with no power to change the situation. Friends, if you and I don't think that that, that, that that is exactly what the devil wants to do to you and us, you and I, then you better think again. The devil takes great, uh, great pleasure out of stealing your anointing. The devil takes great pleasure, amen, out of stealing your power with God. The devil takes great pleasure out of, out of stealing, amen, everything that God has given you. For he does come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The story of Samson should have been one of great honor, great dignity, great respect. Samson, she should have been a name that mothers would have been proud to give to their boys. That was God's intention. That was God's plan. That was God's purpose for Samson. But he got his eyes off of the things of God and on to the things and to the lusts of his own flesh. And he began to sing the wrong song. What song are you singing this evening? Is there something in your life that is taking your eyes off of God? Is there something in your life that you that, that, that is causing you to no longer sing the songs of Zion, to sing the songs of the Lord, but now you're singing a new tune. Now you're singing a new song to something else in your life. What song are you singing? By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof, for there they that carried us away captive required of us a song. And they that wasted us required of us mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? You're in this world, but you're not of this world. This world is not your final resting place. This world is not your home. Do not lay your treasures up in this world, but lay your treasures up, amen, in heaven, in the kingdom of God, where neither moth, nor rust, nor thieves can break through. Who said those words? It wasn't me. Jesus said those words. Yes, you're in this world. You live in this world. You work in this world. You toil in this world. But you're not of this world. What song are you singing? Amen. As they come and give us a song this evening, we're going to open up this altar and invite you to pray. I would, I would encourage and I would love for everyone in this place to find themselves a, a place to pray at this altar this evening. And just because you come to this altar does not mean that it, 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 it does not mean that you have traded the song of Zion for the song of the world. But maybe you're going to come to this altar this evening for strength because you say you know there is something that has been distracting me. Something that's been trying to take my eyes off of the prize. Something that's been trying, amen, to get my focus off of God. I haven't done that yet. I'm coming to the altar because I need strength to endure. Maybe you're here this evening and you say, I'm 
guilty. I'm guilty. I've stopped singing the song of the Lord. I've kind of left, I've kind of, I've kind of let down on some areas of my life and I've brought something into my home or brought something into my life that I know is not supposed to be there. And I want victory over that tonight. Maybe you're saying, I'm guilty of singing the wrong song to the wrong person. I'm guilty of singing to this world. I'm guilty of singing a song to my life. I'm guilty of singing a song to, 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 to things in this life that I know are not of the plan of God for my life. And I need help. Friends, whatever the situation is in your life this evening, there is hope in the altar. There is hope at the altar for you. But do not wait until you find yourself sitting by the riverbanks with your harp hanging on the willow tree with no song to sing. While there is still time, while there is still a chance, while, there's, while the Spirit of God is knocking upon your heart's door, Jesus says today is the day of salvation, not tomorrow. Fear not promise tomorrow. But while you hear Him knocking, open up the door and let Him in. Whatever the situation is in your life, whether you need strength or whether you need repentance, whether you need, amen, strength to go one or the mile, whether you need help to tear down an idol in your life, whatever the situation is in your life this evening, you can find the answer and the hope that you need in this altar. Amen. This altar is open this evening. If you would come and pray as they sing. Amen. God bless you all.